Praise the Lord today, saints. Hallelujah to the Most High God. It's a beautiful day today, the 8th of September, 2014. And we are progressing. Hallelujah. The progression. Today's message. You know, this is vitally important that we remember that as believers, we are progressing. Okay? We're going forward. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today for this word lord i just bless you and praise you for planting this in my heart this morning and i thank you for what you will bring forth today lord i thank you that you are preserving your children hallelujah thank you lord that you're continually surrounding us with your fire and your love and mercy and your grace and your righteousness Hallelujah. Lord, I pray, Sharon and I together, that you would touch every soul that would hear this message today, Lord, that you would strengthen them and give them encouragement, give them admonishment, Lord, rebuke where necessary. Because we're all different, Lord, but yet we're one body of Christ, and you have us all at various different stages of the walk, but yet we are all progressing. We're all pressing to the mark of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. Help us to all, Lord, walk in unity with one mind. Hallelujah. Pressing to that mark, Lord, forgetting those things which are behind, we press forward. Lord, we pray that, that your name be exalted in our hearts and in our minds today and that we just continue to focus upon you, Lord. Focus upon you and love you and praise you, knowing that you see every single thing in our heart. You see every thought in our minds, and you know us. You know us, Lord. And you know that we are but dust. And you also know the great and awesome victory you have accomplished in your Son, Father for your children so that we can be and walk in that overcoming power that Christ has given us, hallelujah, by his sacrifice on the cross. Oh, we bless and praise you and thank you, Father. Lord, I just praise you for your people that love you, Lord, that really are sinking into you. And, and we just thank you, Lord, for the body of Christ today, Lord. We thank you for the brothers and sisters in Christ that are just diligent to seek you, Lord. Hallelujah. And we pray for those who aren't so diligent that you would make them, that you would cause them, Lord, to be more diligent in seeking you and, and in loving you and serving you and doing as you have commanded in your word, O oh Lord. You have your way with your bride today, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Hallelujah. Lead us all to the high places, Lord in the kingdom of love and let us remember lord that your humility that you showed forth jesus in coming to this earth is the greatest force in this universe and we must remember that help us to walk in your way doing your works according to your will and purpose crush every work of darkness that tries to hinder that lord in jesus name amen hallelujah praise his holy name the progression okay like two 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, on and on. It's a progression going forward, okay? Getting bigger as we go. Bigger in the spirit, but yet maybe and possibly and unequivocally, it sometimes in our circumstances it can be lower because there's an enlargement taking place in the spirit. See, God's not so concerned he is concerned now. He God is concerned about this natural realm where we live, okay? He's concerned about that, but he's not as concerned about that as he is the spiritual realm where we live, okay? And God is looking for enlargement. He wants to, to enlarge the Son of God in us. The Father, this is his plan, and he does it by the Holy Ghost and the regeneration in the Holy Ghost and as we surrender more to the Father, as we surrender more to the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and minds and in our life, we, we can see this progression taking place. 
going forward in the Lord. Going forward in the Lord. And don't be perturbed today. Don't be anxious today about anything going on in the natural realm, says the Lord. Don't don't be all freaked out about things going on in the natural realm because a lot of times we have no control over these things that happen in the natural. We have no control over these things. Let me tell you a story. There was this missionary, and the missionary was traveling, I think, from Turkey over to Pakistan or somewhere. He was, this was back, I guess, in the early 1900s. And so he had a bunch of mules and loaded up with stuff, and he was traveling, him and his small little company, and they were going to another outpost. And every night, this missionary would pray. As he was progressing along his route, he would pray and seek the Lord, pray for God's protection on the way. He was really pressing in. Well, all the way along, there was this band of robbers that were going to rob this missionary of all of his goods. One night, the missionary, he was so worn out from his journey. He was tired. He was getting toward the end of his journey. Now, this is speaking of his physical circumstances. And because of that tiredness, he he waned in his prayer that evening. He didn't pray as fervently or as hard, I suppose, as he had the previous nights. And that night, the the robbers were able to come in unto him. But the amazing thing is, and this is a good thing the Lord just reminded me of, because even in our weakness, in a time when we are down, in a time where we are maybe pressed sore in the physical, and it affects the spiritual We're we're being pressed sore. We're going through something. The Lord can even use that. Because what happened was these, these robbers came in. And they said. What is this big wall we see around? What's this? Where's this wall coming from? What was happening was God was putting a gigantic wall. Around this missionary in his camp every night. These robbers would see this huge wall. They could not penetrate the wall. They couldn't go over the wall. But this night that he was waning in his prayer, he was tired and worn out. There was a little doorway in the wall, and they got through the doorway. And they wanted to know what this wall was. See, God used all this these circumstances to save this band of robbers because the missionary was able to share the gospel with them. But he was progressing along his journey. And as we're progressing along our journey, we have times where we're going through something real strong. And it's, it can weigh us down. And in, in the spirit, it's so heavy. In the spirit, it's so pressing. It's such a battle that it can wear us out physically. And we can be doing things in the physical realm that are so tiring that we can be worn out physically where we're not as fervent in the spirit. And God wants us to have a balance there where we know the Holy Spirit's speaking to us. And he says, okay, cease, you know, cease from your labor right now. Cease from your running to and fro and doing and doing and doing. And and that's vitally important that that we hear the Holy Spirit telling us when to stop, when to slow down. See, there's a progression in, in the fall in the garden, you know, we see this. Now the serpent was more subtle, Genesis 3, than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? He put this question to her, and so now she kicks in her reason. She's going to answer the serpent. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. 
But she was reasoning now, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat it, eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. So she was answering the serpent. See, she shouldn't have been talking to the serpent. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. He lied to her. For God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So now her, her whole reason and motions is kicking in. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, knowledge, she was getting knowledge. Oh, that's important to have knowledge, isn't it? Not the devil's way. <laughs> it's important to have the knowledge of the Lord. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. So see the progression? The fall, it led to fear. Fear. You know, today the Lord would say to us, if there's any sort of fear in our life, it can be a little bit of fear. You can call fear timidity. You can call it being overly concerned. Okay? There's many things that we want to control that we're not able to control. So we get anxious and overly concerned about these things. That's, that's a type of fear it's a worry because we think if I can't control this situation then, then something bad is going to happen God wants us to know that that fear is the result of the fall it's because we are getting out of the progression that the Holy Spirit has us on in Christ and we're getting into the progression of this world. Okay. Hallelujah. Now, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, in 1 John, the book of 1 John, chapter 5. I'm gonna, we're going to start out in this verse in 1 John 5. Verse number 19. Verse number 19, it says, And we know that we are of God. Now this is toward the end of the book of 1 John. The end of the book. And we know that we, John the Apostle is speaking to the body of Christ, are of God. And the whole world lieth in wickedness. The whole world lieth in wickedness. Okay? And the word lieth is a word to lie outstretched. It's a primary verb. It's like the whole world lieth in... They're, they're outstretched. They're relaxing. They're, they're just having uh, just a, a wonderful time in wickedness. Okay? Hurtful, evil, okay? This is, I mean, ill, diseased, morally culpable, derelict, vicious, mischief, malice, guilt, okay? The devil, 
sinners, bad, evil, lewd, malicious, wickedness. The whole world is stretched out in this way. See, this is the progression of the world. And what did Paul say? He said that evil men and seducers shall what? Wax worse and worse. Okay? Deceiving and being deceived. Okay? This is the progression of the wicked. They just get more wicked and more wicked. Those who have hardened their hearts to the gospel. The religious crowd, for instance. There, you know, there was a religious man that was so religious in his fervor, in his fervency for Jehovah. I mean, he was absolutely, his whole life was consumed with serving God. But he was a religious man. And one day this man was struck down on the road to Damascus and his name was Paul. He was Saul of Tarsus. And, and Christ called to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? When Paul got the revelation that he was persecuting the living and the true God, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, he repented right there. He was three days blind. He he. He was just absolutely, his whole life was just absolutely transformed right there. And then he began to walk out that transformation. And when he got to the end of his life, he said, oh, that I might know him. Because he knew there was so much to know. His life was a progression. God had revealed many revelations to Paul, but yet Paul at the end of his life is like, I want to know him. And this is where God brings us today. We want to know him more. Now, John here in 1 John, he is taking the saints on a little journey, okay? On a little journey of our life as Christians today. And he is giving us the word of Jehovah for us. I begin at the end because you see the progression we're talking now, speaking what the Lord is sharing. This whole world lieth in wickedness. There is one thing only that we can do as Christians. And that is to live the Christ life. And the way we do that is by surrender. is by coming to the cross, taking up our cross daily, denying ourselves. And allowing the Holy Spirit to work through us to manifest Christ who is victorious over all the works of darkness. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Chapter 1. Chapter 1. Look, in the beginning, that which was from the beginning, John said, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the father and was manifested unto us that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son jesus christ oh hallelujah and these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Oh, hallelujah. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. No darkness at all. But there's darkness in the world, isn't there? Yeah. There's shadiness. Men love darkness rather than light. And they wouldn't come to the light because their deeds were evil. That's this whole world, see? Verse 6, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, walk in this world like the ways of the world and do like the world, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. 
and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanseth us from all sin. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanseth us from all sin. Hallelujah. And that word cleanseth, powerful word there. Hallelujah. Catharizo. I guess to get the word uh, catheterized or cauterized from that word. To cleanse, literally or figuratively, make clean, purge, purify. Let me ask you a question. When you throw your shirt in the washing machine to wash it, does it, do, you, do you put it in and take it right out? Or does it have to go through a process of cleaning? It goes through a process, doesn't it? And so the Son of Je- the Son Jesus Christ, the Son of God, He cleanseth us from all sin. Hallelujah! He's He's cl- cleansing us right now. Hallelujah! He's cleansing us. We are purified by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah! And we get more understanding about how to walk in that victory that Christ is as we surrender to the Holy Ghost. Oh, Hallelujah! Oh, praise God! Hallelujah. Now, it's taken from a word which means clean, clean, clear, pure. Hallelujah. See, that, that's what the blood's all about, about cleansing us, purifying us. All of our iniquities was laid upon him. Hallelujah. We need to walk in this fact and know it because there's power in knowing it and believing it and walking in it. Hallelujah. If we say that we have no sin, if we say that we have no sin, John is writing, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. That's powerful. That is a powerful verse. If we say that we have no sin, you know what's powerful about it? Number one, the Holy Ghost wrote it. Number two, he used the apostle John to write it. And number three, hallelujah, by experience, we found it to be so true, hallelujah. Because sometimes you can get a little further on your walk and you're, you're closer to Christ and you think, I could never act like that again. I could never do that again. And then bammo, whammo, sammo. Here comes that attitude out again. Or here comes that, that strife. Or here comes this. Or here comes that. A little unforgiveness starts popping up. And John says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Now, does that mean we sin every day? No, he's not saying that. And then verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Now, verse 8 again. I want to go back to this. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Oh, yeah. We deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Now, I'm going to copy this verse. I'm copying it. I'm going to put it over here in my notes on the Esau because I'm fixing to refer right back to it okay there it is now I'm going to go to chapter 2 here now look what John says my little children he's progressing in in his in his delivery of this Holy Ghost message to the church he's progressing and he's he's going to describe some things now as we go into chapter 2 that that the Holy Spirit wants us to understand in this hour in 2014 okay September the 8th, where we, we know, we can recognize where we are in this progression, okay? God wants us to identify today. He wants to give us some identifiers. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. So here is an injunction from the Holy Spirit. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. So see, there's a choice to be made today in the life of the believer. Okay? 
choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to walk in his righteous way because of the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. See, Because people take verse 8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. They take that and say, oh, everybody sins. Everybody sins. And people who say that, they're, yeah, that's right. That's what they're doing. Okay. But John said right here, my little children, these things write unto you that ye sin not. He, the Holy Spirit wouldn't write this if it was impossible for us to not sin. Okay. What John is writing in verse number 9, let me turn over in my scripture here so I can reference that. Is John, in 9 and 10 of 1 John chapter 1, hallelujah, I thank God the Lord for putting this on my heart this morning because I know there's some people that need this word today I know I need the word hallelujah all the time verse 9 says if we confess our sins he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we say that we have not sinned we make him a liar and his word is not in us see you can't go around I can't go around saying I didn't sin what if I'm doing some sort of sin that's, that's grievous to the Holy Spirit and I don't even know about it? Because the Holy Spirit hadn't convicted me. So, so does that make me okay? See, many people are going to be in the marriage feast. They're going to get in. They're going to be there, but they're not going to be clothed in white linen. They're going to be naked. And Jesus is going to say, how did you get in here? Because they're not going to have the blood on them. They're not going to have the cleansing and the regeneration and the precious blood of Jesus and the Holy Ghost. They have religion. So we can't say, oh, I never sin. You know, the people on, on YouTube, a lot of people on YouTube, I never sin, they say. I never commit a sin. See, they're going contrary to the Word of God. But it is possible that you can go through a day and the Holy Spirit not convict you of any known sin. But what do you do in that case? Do you puff up in pride? Or do you got the sin of pride right there, see? No, you don't. You, you kneel down before the Lord and say, Lord, search me and try me. See if there be any wicked way in me. Oh, God, lead me in the way everlasting. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not hallelujah that ye sin not and if any man sin we have an advocate with the father jesus christ the righteous hallelujah and if any man sin we have an advocate with the father jesus christ the righteous and he is the propitiation hallelujah he is the propitiation for our sins hallelujah Hallelujah. Look how beautiful that is. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. He's the propitiation. His, his sacrifice is enough. Hallelujah. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Many people today, they say they know the Lord, but they're not keeping his commandments. And John's going to get in to some of these here some of these commandments and the main one in this book of first john john's talking about hatred loving the world and denying the lord jesus these are the certain sins he's speaking to the church about because you see this today don't you in the church you see many believers today in the church who love the world and the things of the world their whole life is consumed with the world and the ways of the world, and yet they, they have the social club church that they go to twice a week. You know, the, there's a lot of rich. You know, the rich have country clubs, and, and you go to Quail Creek Country Club in Oklahoma City, and all the rich people, they, they have their little, they got restaurants there. They got all these things where they just sit around and just relax, and people wait on them, you know. See, and... You go to church on Sunday, it's a country club a lot of times, just like these country clubs out there 
in the world. Because the people surround themselves with other people and everybody's okay. And nobody wants to take the cross in to the truth of what's going on in people's lives because there's so many hurting people who have this mask on. And God wants to take the mask off today. And hereby we do know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. He that saith I know him. And keepeth not his commandments. Is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his commandments. Excuse me. But whoso keepeth his word. In him verily is the love of God perfected. Oh, hallelujah. Keep his word. Then the love of God's perfected in us. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. And how did Jesus walk? He walked in submission. He walked in humility. He walked in complete and total dependence upon his father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is how the Father wants us all to walk today. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you. Because the darkness is past. Hallelujah. You see, we're, we're children of the light today. We are children of the light. Hallelujah. The darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light. Here, here's sin number one. He's going to describe this. He that saith he is in the light, and hateth his brother, is in darkness, even until now. This is one of the chief sins john speaks about in one john hatred murder hating our brothers now jesus christ commanded us if you're if someone slaps you on the right cheek turn to him the other also if a man compels you forces you at gunpoint or at sword point to go a mile with him carry his bags for a mile you do it for two miles he said do it for two miles He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brothers in darkness, even until now. He that loveth, this is agapeo, this is the verb, action. His brother abideth in the light. And there is none occasion of stumbling in him. See, when Jesus said, love your enemies, pray for those who bless you, I mean who curse you bless and curse not jesus said these are commandments that the lord's given to us so with all these things happening in the earth today with all these uh wars and rumors of wars and rumors of terrorism and rumors of this and of that taking place and if we begin to see major calamities taking place cities destroyed what what is that how are we going to react the bible says in revelation chapter 16 that all the cities of the earth are going to be destroyed so if we begin to see all the cities of the earth being destroyed we should rejoice because the bible is coming true and we should rejoice in in the fact that we know god has our brothers and sisters in christ right where he wants them to be hallelujah and when Jesus said, bless your enemies, he said, pray for them and bless them. Love your enemies, he said. So how, how, can, we, how can we say we're Christians if we, if we love only the brethren over here? Okay. But we don't love our enemies. We have hatred in our heart toward the new world order. Hatred toward these people, these wicked, vile sinners out there in the world who are lying in wickedness. How can we say we love if there's hatred in our heart? That's murder. 
The Lord Jesus died on the cross for those people. But they have shaken their fist in his face. And many of those people in the higher ups in this world, many of them, many of them, maybe, maybe the majority, I don't know, God knows. Their names are blotted out of the book. See? He's blotted their names out of the book. Some of them, many of them. But some, their names aren't blotted out yet. Because God is a merciful God, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. Hallelujah. Oh, we like that verse. We like that verse that God is slow to anger and abounding in kindness. See, we are in Christ. We are protected from all this evil. We are protected by the Lord. Hallelujah. But a wicked person, a vile sinner who refuses the Lord Jesus Christ is not being protected like we're being protected. They need the Lord. They need salvation. And God's right there to give it to them. And if they keep shaking their fist in God's face forever, they keep walking in unbelief, that's the sin. That is the sin that damns the soul to hell. Unbelief. Look at here. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. You know, this, this verse here, verse 9 of chapter 2 of 1 John, is a powerful, packed verse. I mean, that is so powerful. You can, you can basically see the whole Bible right there in that one verse. It'll take you all the way back to Genesis 4. You know, Cain thought he was righteous, yeah, but he hated his brother. And John picks that up again here in a minute. I've I've seen some videos, documentaries about slavery and about uh, the southern United States and how the white man treat the black man. See, all of us, whether the skin color is white, what we call white, or black, or red, or yellow, or brown, whatever race, the blood in the veins is still red and you can take that blood out of out of me and put it in another person with the same type of blood whether they're black brown red or white or yellow forgot about the chinaman see you can the blood will transfer the skin color and people are prejudiced and you see some some of these documentaries are so disturbing I mean they are so filled with such evil now I'm not saying the black people were all good and everything else in the south I'm saying this there was a race of people the white man who oppressed the black man and hated the black man and committed atrocities against the black man overall Now, there were blacks who committed atrocities as well on the whites. Both of them are wrong, okay? Because Jesus said, love your enemies, okay? But for the the audacity, here's what the the point I want to bring out in telling that story is this. That many of the whites in the south, in the southern United States, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Arkansas, Texas, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, maybe even over into Kentucky and Florida, these all these southern states, Missouri. They go to church on Sunday and say they love God. They say they're filled with the Spirit of God. They're saved. They're baptized. And then they will kill black people for nothing, for fun. Because their their skin color is black. See, they are walking against the truth. They're walking in darkness. They're walking in religion when they do that. And I, I know the Lord is saying this right now because there's coming warfare to this earth. 
like there's never been before. And people are going to be killing other people just because of the color of their skin. And if you're a Christian today and you start killing people because of the color of their skin, you are in deep trouble with God. Now, I'm not talking about self-defense here. I'm talking about just, oh, there's one, kill them. That's not the Lord's way. The Lord's way is for a Christian to press into him and fear him. Because those that fear the Lord, the angel of the Lord surrounds them and protects them. Hallelujah. He that saith he is in the light, and that's what Christians profess, that we're walking in the light, and hateth his brother, is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. I remember growing up in Houston, southeast part of town. I remember growing up there, and it was a white neighborhood, middle class. Yeah, it was all whites, and then a black family moved in, and five white families moved out. Then another black family moved in, and ten more white families moved out. But the, the thing that I remember the most is my father became friends with the first black man that moved his family to that neighborhood because my dad was not a prejudiced man. My dad grew up in the South, in Louisiana. So I grew up among black people, and I was never prejudiced against black people. I could be friends with them just like I can a white man or a Mexican. It doesn't matter. Because we're all people, and we all need the Lord Jesus Christ to save us from sin. Hallelujah! And he's done the work. And we are saved today, many of us, truly saved. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. And there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Because we're walking in the light. We can see. There's no scandal. Praise God. There's no snare. Praise the Lord. Verse 11. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness. And knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Now look at verse 12. Now look at that again. Now look at this encouragement that the Holy Ghost has given us. Because many people, they struggle with this. They don't know if their sins are forgiven, but the Bible right here says, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are are forgiven you for his name's sake. Hallelujah. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. Many people today are saying, I want to be an overcomer. I want to overcome. I want to do this, and I want to be an overcomer, and I'm striving to be an overcomer. And the Bible right here clearly says, right here, he says, I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. See, this is what you need to be saying. I have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him. That is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Two times, in two verses, next to each other, the Apostle John, by the Holy Spirit, tells the young man, tells the youth, tells those who are born again and filled with the Spirit of God, ye have overcome the wicked one. See? We have the victory today. Oh, glory to the King. And we are progressing on and going deeper and deeper and deeper into Christ. Hallelujah. Discovering the height, the depth, the breadth, the length of his love. Hallelujah. And when temptation comes knocking on our door, because we have overcome the wicked one, we submit to God. We resist the devil and watch the devil flee. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, praise his holy name. Then he says, love not the world. This is agapeo. This is a verb. Love not the world. The cosmos. The orderly arrangement. Oh, people love it. 
I mean it. Neither the things that are in the world. You know, hey, how long has it been since you've been to the mall? Okay, I don't know how many years it's been since Sharon and I have been to a mall. Maybe back in 2000, I don't know, was the last time. It's been a long time since we've been to the mall. But you know, when you're walking through the mall, what are, what are you doing? You're looking at all the stuff. Huh. And you're thinking, oh, I wish I could have that. Oh, I'd like to have that. Oh, I'd like to have that. We all struggle with it, don't we? I like old cars. Every time I see an old car, I have it just comes out, oh, that'd be cool to have that car. See? Why? Why would that be cool? Really? See? Because, you know, I just like old cars. But I ask the Lord, Lord, help me with that. Because I don't need to, I don't need an old car. I got an old car. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. But when you're walking through that mall, what do you you just coveting all the way through? It's serious. God God wants us to examine today our hearts and say, God, search me and try me. Because I don't want to love the world. And I know you don't want to love the world. And I don't love the world. I don't agapeo this world. Okay? I get the things that I need, and that's it. Basically, very, very seldom do we get some of those big wants that we have, you know. We've been praying for many things for, for years that we believe we would like to have. But God says, that's not necessary. He says, okay, Lord. But see, I remember back when I was in the fifth grade. In the fifth grade now, in the fifth grader, okay, back in the 70s, early 70s, hey, I had some desires, you know. I was a kid, you know. I had some desires. And one of those desires was to win the 10-speed at the, the October Bazaar, okay. To win, it was a Huffy Lazy Brakes Pearl White 27-inch 10-speed. Now, if you were born in that you grew up in that area you know what i'm talking about just a beautiful bicycle and i wanted to win that and so i was selling raffle tickets and my mother she bought one sheet of raffle tickets from me and and i filled my name in on every one of them she said you could put your name on there i did and i remember before they drew that name out i was i was behind the stage in there and i was just crying i was weeping like a baby i was crying to god i said god please let me win please let me win god I was crying to God, crying to God. I, I mean, I had tears coming down my face. And I was such a rebellious punk little kid, man. I tell you what. And I, when, I, when I hit that door, I was going out the door to go home. When the principal called out my name for first prize. And I was just, praise the Lord. But I, I was like, I mean, in my heart, I was like, I just ran up there. My brother ran up there. He grabbed that 10 speed off that stage. We took it across to the house. Oh, everybody was just looking. They just couldn't. I, I just was like, just blown away. And God let me win that 10 speed today. So I know today that I can pray to God. I can ask God for anything that he lays on my heart and he will answer it. Maybe not in my timetable, but he will answer. And the more I get into Christ, the less I love this world and the things of this world. And we know, we, we've been walking with the Lord a long time. We know that it's not good if we love the world and the things of this world. It's a hindrance to the walk. It's a hindrance to our going forward into Christ. And right here in verse 14, he says, we have overcome the wicked one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 13, we have overcome the wicked one. Hallelujah. Okay? So let us walk like we've overcome the wicked one. Let it manifest in our lives that we have overcome the wicked one by not loving this world. Hallelujah. Because he said, the Holy Spirit, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father, the agape of the Father. See, if you agape, O oh, the world, the agape of the Father is not in him. 
For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And it came in at the beginning, okay, with Adam and Eve. It came in right then. Verse 17, and the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Little children, it is the last time. This is the last hour. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last, the last time. It's the last time. It's the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. That's such a powerful verse. I love verse 20. I love every verse in this book and every verse in the Bible. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Do you believe that today? I believe that today. I believe that today. I thank you, God, for this word. Hallelujah. John says, I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it. What are they saying in the church today? Nobody knows. Oh, or, you know, they speculate about the Bible. They speculate about this and about that. We were speaking to some people recently, and, and, and it came out, you know, the, the non-essential things we can agree to disagree upon. Okay, that, okay, fine. Non-essential, the rapture, non-essential. You think it's non-essential. These types of teachings, you know, okay, these are non-essential, so we can, uh, we can all disagree on these things. Okay, that's fine. Go ahead, disagree. But why do you want to focus on what you disagree about? Okay, why do you want the devil wants God's people to focus on what they disagree about to keep the strife going? Because where strife is and evil, every evil work, see strife and contention. That's the devil's work. So God's people need to come to the place where they agree. Now, that's the cross now. And then let's proceed from there. Hallelujah. And walk in the fullness. Hallelujah. See? Knowing that the Bible is true. Oh, I believe the Word of God. I believe everything about it. Oh, I believe it's the Word of God. Inerrant. Hallelujah. Inspired by God. All right, what do you think about this verse? Oh, no, wait, wait, wait a minute. Nobody understands that. Oh, really? Well, I have an unction from the Holy One, and I know all things. And I know if I pray and seek the Lord, He'll give me an understanding about that verse. How's He going to do that? He's going to give me an experience. He's going to let me experience something. He's going to show me what that verse contains. So I can communicate it to someone else. Hallelujah. John says, I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it. And that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is any Christ that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son, he, he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you. Abide. Abide is a big word here in this in this book. It's abide. Let me look that word up. Oh, to stay. It's a primary verb. In a given place, in a given state, relation or expectancy. Abide. Continue. Dwell. Endure. Be present, remain, stand, tarry, tarry for. Oh, hallelujah, abide in that hope. Abide in that faith, in that believing, hallelujah, that God has heard you when you've cried unto him. Abide in that, hallelujah, abide in the truth. <clears throat> Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall, re shall remain in you, ye, sh ye also shall continue in the Son 
and in the Father. And this is the promise that He hath promised us even eternal life. Oh, hallelujah. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. See, there's people out there trying to seduce us, trying to seduce God's people, trying to make us roam and stray from the narrow path. And John, he says here, these things have I written unto you. This is you right now, 21st century Christian. 21st century young man, young woman, older man, older woman. 21st century teenager, John says to you, the Holy Spirit speaking, these things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. There's people out there trying to seduce you, to cause you to roam from the safety, from truth or virtue. They're trying to deceive you, make you err, make you wander and be out of the way. That's why he wrote this. See, there's, he, gives, he gives the reasons here in this, in this chapter 2 and in other places why he's written to the saints see, that we sin not. And then he's writing concerning them that seduce you. These things have I writ written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, even and even as it, it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. See, the Holy Ghost that you received on the day when you were saved, hallelujah, will teach you. He will give you that quickening, that intuitive knowing. Oh, this is bad. I smell something here in the spirit. Oh, this is not good. Oh. And then he'll give you an understanding. Oh, this is wonderful. Oh, that's the Lord. You'll know. Oh, wow, that's God moving. Hallelujah. See? Hallelujah. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Now, we've done these two chapters here. And this is the progression God is bringing us. He's showing us. And each one of us can, can find ourselves here in this book. Each one of us can see our lives here in this book right here. This is a powerful book. I've read one, John, I don't know how many times. And every time I read it, I get new things, new revelations out of there. New application because of experience. Experienced along the way. I did a whole teaching on it two years ago, two or three years ago. It was a four-hour message on the whole book. And the Lord is bringing a refresher right here. He's giving more understanding and revelation because there's many people who need to hear this message. We cannot walk with hatred in our heart today. We cannot walk in unforgiveness today. We cannot walk in these ways. We must walk in love and in mercy and in grace. We must walk in confession and th saying, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for dying for my sins. Thank you, Lord, for cleansing me from all unrighteousness. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for subduing my iniquity. Hallelujah. And casting my sins as far as the east is from the west, from me. Thank you for all the power. And I know and I'm experiencing more daily, hallelujah, that if I walk by the Spirit, I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Hallelujah. Because the spirit and the flesh are contrary one to the other. The flesh man of man, the flesh man of us does not like the things of God. It's a carnal mind. It cannot receive the things that be of the spirit of God. There is no making the flesh presentable to God. You cannot do it. There is no flesh with glory in his presence. In my flesh dwelleth no good thing, said the apostle, and says all of the children of God today, the true children in our flesh dwells no good thing. So every time we have a desire, let's, let's say, Lord, let me examine that desire. Where is that coming from? Where is that? Is that coming from you, Holy Spirit? 
But when you're taking delight in the Lord, the Lord will give you the desire of your heart. He'll give you that desire. And then he says, now pray. He's done that with us. Maybe we'll share some of those desires. Maybe not. According as the Lord leads. But God's given us many desires in our heart because we take delight in him and we pray. And we've seen many answers to prayer and we've seen many prayers not answered yet. But they will be answered. We believe we have faith and we have hope. We walk in the Lord. And God wants you to do the same. God says you can do the same. Hallelujah. More fully today than you ever have. Glory to the King. Oh, Father, I bless you today. And I thank you for the progression that you have set us on the path. Lord, that you brought us to yourself. Hallelujah. You've saved us. Lord, you filled us with your spirit. Hallelujah. We are victorious overcomers. Hallelujah. And we walk in your way, Lord Jesus. Keep us in the narrow way. Help us to walk with you and love you and praise you. Help us to love those who hurt us and slander us and lie about us and say all manner of evil against us falsely for your sake, Lord Jesus. Help us to love the unlovely, Lord. Help us to love those prisoners behind bars today in solitary confinement. Oh, God, help us to love them today. Help us to just just pray for them, Lord. We lift them up to you right now, God. Touch them, Lord, and help them. Save them, God. Visit them in their cells, Lord Jesus. Get them prepared for what's coming, oh God. Hallelujah. We pray for those in prison for the sake of the name, those that have been framed and lied about. And thrown in prison because they preach the gospel. God, we pray you visit them in a mighty way today. And that every word they you have them speak, Lord, that it will not fall to the ground. That you will convert many in those prisons, Lord. Oh, Father, we praise you. And we thank you that you are the mighty God, the everlasting Father. Go forth now, O God. Rise up, O Lord. And show forth your mighty right arm of deliverance today for your church, for your people, O God. O God, move, Lord. Move, Lord, today. In a mighty way. In this earth. Oh God you are the righteous God. The living God. Touch the mountains and they will smoke. Oh God the earth trembles before you. Oh Lord today. Oh God move mightily for your people today. Help us all to keep our focus upon you Lord. Crush every work of darkness that will try to hinder this word from having its full way in us. Oh, Lord, I thank you for the progression you've set us on. I thank you that we are progressing and going forward in Christ. And I thank you for all that you have for us this day, Lord, this day that you want us to put our hands on and do, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you. We give you thanks for all things. We thank you for every circumstance. We thank you for every trial. We thank you, Lord, for the hard times. We thank you for the good times. We thank you for what we think are hard and good, Lord. We thank you. We thank you sometimes, Lord, that we don't understand because then you bring the understanding. You told us not to lean upon our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge you and you shall direct our steps. You shall direct our steps, O God, this day. Oh, we praise and thank you and bless you. O God, I pray for those. I pray for anyone, Lord, that you have spoken to, Lord, today concerning this ministry. Lord, I pray that you move upon them in a mighty way today. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. God, you are the holy God. You are the righteous lamb. You are the great I am. And you have your way in this earth today and have your way in your church today, oh God. You do your work. Help us all to surrender and get out of the way. And just let you take us up. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 You can write this ministry if you want to talk to Sharon or I. For both of us, we're also available to get on Skype and minister to people uh, via uh, voice, uh, Skype voice. You write, Behold a new thing at yahoo.com. Behold a new thing at yahoo.com. The Lord bless you, keep you, make his holy face shine upon you. The Lord lift up his holy countenance upon you and grant you peace. The Lord be gracious unto each and every one of you today that know him and are born anew from heaven, filled with his spirit. His name, authority, and character be upon your life today. Walk in the mighty power of the Lord Jesus in humility today, depending solely on the Father for all you have need of. Oh, Father, keep us all obedient to you, Lord, in Jesus' name.
Amen. God bless you all. Have a blessed day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.